With the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic, the new skating season is in full swing. Michelle Kwan arrived in style Thursday night. And with a flawless performance, she captured the ladies' crown. Now, the men take center stage. Including Ilya Kulik, the reigning Olympic champion. Kurt Browning, the four-time world champion from Canada. The showman, Philippe Candeloro of France. Hometown favorite, Rudy Galindo. And Todd Eldridge, the five-time U.S. champion. The men are in the spotlight on a night of stars at the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic. Welcome everyone to the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic. We're in the Bay Area of California, inside the San Jose Arena, for the conclusion of the men's competition. Hi everybody, I'm Terry Gannon. A group of Olympic and world medalists is getting ready to compete for the overall men's title. It's a group that includes professionals like Kurt Browning and skaters still eligible for the Olympics and worlds like Todd Eldridge and current Olympic champion Ilya Kulik. Now this U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic is part of a new series sanctioned by the International Skating Union that brings together the two classifications of skaters and allows them to compete head-to-head -head in a meaningful way. We welcome in the two-time Olympic champion, Dick Button. Dick, the other thing that the open competition does, it really allows the skaters a lot of freedom. Well, that's because the rules of this competition are, to all extents and purposes, professional rules. No specific requirements, no restrictions, and therefore no serious mandatory deduction. And that makes it an open playing field and an even playing field. And one thing that's happened here is really an extraordinary situation. The Olympic champion, mm -hmm. Ilya Kulik, is in last place. Todd Eldridge, who did not score to at the tops at the Olympic Games, is in first place. Uh, what a confrontation this is. It's a shock. Ilya Kulik in last place. The battle between the two, a major story so far. The third member of our broadcast team is Jimmy Roberts. He has more on those two skaters right now. Jimmy? All right, Terry, as you mentioned, a somewhat unusual circumstance. The reigning Olympic champion in last place, but Ilya Kulik says he's not only disappointed for himself, but for the 40 or so members of his fan club who've assembled here at this competition from all over the country. Now, Kulik is in last place, but it was Kulik who was consoling Rudy Galindo earlier after the technical program. Galindo is in second to last place. He was also disappointed with the judging. As for the man at the top of the standings, Todd Eldridge, well, his coach, Richard Callahan, says he thinks he skated just great. Well, Jimmy, the judges agreed with Richard Callahan. That's why Todd Eldridge, as we look at the current standings, is in first place. Hope you saw Kurt Browning's program in the technical side on Thursday night. He was magnificent. He's ahead of Philippe Candeloro of France, and it's Rudy Galindo and Ilya Kulik. This is the order in which they will skate. Rudy Galindo will be on the ice first, then the reigning Olympic champion, followed by Todd Eldridge, Philippe Candeloro, and Kurt Browning. The artistic program weighted the same as the technical program, and Rudy Galindo in his hometown takes the ice first. As Jimmy told us, he felt he deserved higher marks from the judges in the technical. He's always taken chances and felt misunderstood. I'm always paying a price for everything I do. Um, there's just the other guys, they just do conservative uh, programs and do this and that. And I come out with something where the judges are like, and people are just like shocked. I mean, the audience loves my stuff, but they don't have to judge me. And you get these conservative, uh, conservative ISU judges, and they're just like, what is he doing? You know, they're not educated on what I'm doing of the village people and the YMCA, and they don't know what over the rainbow means, uh, dedication to the uh, gay pride flag, and they don't get any of the, anything I do. Being openly gay and just, um, and being Mexican-American and, and trying to come up the rankings, there are so many times I got standing ovations and I never get the marks, and um, I think I've definitely paid the price, and I, I still am today. Ladies and gentlemen, from the United States, Rudy Galindo. The judges certainly understood him back in 1996 in this building when he captured the U.S. championship. A warm reception from a crowd that remembers that day very well. And this in the Navy, Macho Man and YMCA by the village people.
got to say, this is a program he has fun with. He told us this week that, that he's gotten to the point where it almost doesn't phase him. The the <laughs> Nothing can phase him. Look at this. <laughs> Great triple moves like that double combination. with this and I'll tell you something the audience does too look at the come on Dick why, why aren't you doing in I am I can't you see my arm movement I learned it from look at this look at this you know I mean Ilya Kulik could take a lesson from that there you go. Now, I, I mean, I got to tell you, I think that's a wonderfully put together program. Musical, good technique, really solid all the way down the line. It has fun with it. In every sense of the word, interpretive program, that is it. I hope the judges uh, see that and understand what that's all about. Well, no matter what, you have to give him so much credit for doing it the way he wants to do it and sticking to that. Ah, ah, did you see that hand movement where he just went like that to, to, to the judges? <laughs> Good for him. Now, the best thing about this program is that he can be the character that he plays and still pull off triple <laughs> moves like that. And that was a beauty. But the main part of it is the fun he has with it. And look what he says to the judges here at the end. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> the marks for C80 Technique, 5.4. Rooting and his sister, Laura, expecting a baby, uh, Laura is, in December. But obviously, he doesn't like the marks, but he expected them. No, but you know something, I don't like the marks either. I'm sorry. I, I agree with them. He did wonderful, wonderful technical moves in there. I mean, I don't think they even know what they're looking at when they look at his spins. I mean, that stuff is tough. I mean, I, I frankly don't, I frankly am on Rudy's side on this. Sorry. Much higher marks for presentation, Dick, and Rudy told us this week, he knows the judges just don't get him, but the audience does. When we come back, Ilya Kulik of Russia the reigning Olympic champion, how things have changed in his life since he left Moscow. He's a West Coast guy now. He'll take the ice when we come back. Welcome back to the San Jose Arena. The men's artistic program continues with Ilya Kulik, how capturing a, an Olympic gold medal can change your life. Jimmy Roberts has more. Life is good for the reigning men's Olympic figure skating champion. He's got a new car, a Porsche. He's got a new town, Los Angeles. He's about to close on his first home. Ilya Kulik's life is good, good as gold. 
Last February, at only 20 years of age, he became the youngest men's Olympic champion ever. When it counted, he skated the program of his life. I said, you know, this is, this is your season. You, you, need, you need to do everything just to be prepared for Olympic Games. And I was uh, sacrificing a lot of things for that, you know. I, I put everything on that competition. With dreams of Olympic gold, back in 96, Kulik left friends, family, and his financially troubled homeland to pursue his training in the isolated hamlet of Marlboro, Massachusetts. Here he could skate without distraction. After realizing the dream in Nagano, he was ready for a reward, to have his family join him in a place he feels he truly belongs. I just love LA and I love motion and I love uh, just this lifestyle, so that's, that's why I moved here. Los Angeles is also the ideal place to pursue a new set of dreams, making it in show business. It hasn't hurt that Kulik bears more than a passing resemblance to a rather famous Hollywood heartthrob, Leonardo DiCaprio, and that he was voted one of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People. Kulik is learning about the business. He recently attended a taping of ABC's new series, Sports Night, and got acting tips from no less than Academy Award winner William H. Macy. America's land of opportunities, and I'm 100% uh, sure that it is. You know, if you have a tal talent, if you have a desire, you can get anything. Who knows what may come of all this? For the time being, as they say, he isn't giving up his day job. He has kept his Olympic eligibility, but for the first time, he trains without daily coaching supervision. I have uh, a lot of discipline uh, inside myself, you know, because if you don't have that discipline, there's no way you can win, win Olympics, you know. So it's not like uh, somebody always pushing you, go skate, go skate, go skate. You know, this person never going to win Olympics. Clearly, Kulik has not been blinded by the bright lights of Hollywood. Not just yet. This is my passion, this is my love, you know, I cannot just uh, drop it and forget it because I'm enjoying the things I'm doing and uh, I love my fans and everybody's waiting to see my new programs, you know, and uh, I'm just so happy to be an ice skater, especially right now. Plenty of change in the life of Ilya Kulik in the last few months, and right now, He's trying to give his fan club something to cheer about. He is in last place heading into the artistic program. Music Tango from Cirque du Soleil. program and he did not complete that well that would have stood him in excellent stead for pulling up dick how do you explain the problems that he has had in this young season well i think it's basically because his technique has been spotty it's been uneven now he's had trouble with some of the basic underlying moves in skating and also i don't think he's been concentrating so much on his teaching and his training in order to correct those mistakes. He has a great quality on the ice. He has a very dramatic and wonderful quality. And a sex appeal that is excellent and a charm and a wonderful light straight up body. Watch this. He lands very much over the edge in a very nice position, but it's not stretched out. Now this spin, for example, doesn't compare to either what Todd Eldridge or Ruby Galindo can do, 
Look, for example, as he pulls up into this stretch, how weak he is, how bent the legs are. That's not anywhere near as good as it could be. Well, despite the fact that he's been somewhat erratic this year, technically, I'll bet the judges will respond to the choreographically interesting program here and, and the pleasant quality that he has and maybe pull him up over uh, Rudy Galindo. Let's tango. <laughs> Judging by the shrieks of the teenagers in the house here, you think the Beatles came back. <laughs> Now, these slow motions show both what a wonderful athlete Kulik is and also how he has trouble with his technique, that it isn't always as solid as it could be. Look at the way he steps up into this, the height, the revolution. But there was a skid on the edge. He didn't make the landing. Now, and in this jump, he has a very sloppy entrance right here. It's almost a two-footed entrance into this triple-toe loop. But then again, he stretches up, and look at the very nice over-the-skate position right there. The the marks marks for it takes Ilya Kulik longer than anyone to get to the kiss and cry area. It might as well be lipstick on his cheeks, all the kisses he got from the crowd. The skating techniques mark 5.6 up to 5.8. And now those for presentation, a wide range of 5.4 from the Japanese judge. Up to a 5.8. You know, it's, it's a difficult program to have to hit him. I, I just thought Rudy Galindo was complete and overall wonderful in this but program. Kulik now ahead That's of Rudy right. Galindo in the standings. And coming up next, the remarkable veteran, Todd Eldridge. Here's that added triple toe loop. He threw it in right there. And the final spin. Look at the center here and look at the speed he gets on this. This is enough to pull any audience to its feet. A standing ovation from a world championship crowd last season in Minneapolis. Now, backstage getting ready to try to do the same here in San Jose. He'll skate when we return to the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic. Welcome back, everyone, inside the San Jose Arena. A reminder coming your way here on ABC Sports, November 8th, beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific, Thrifty Car Rental Skate America International. The first major international competition for those skaters still eligible for the Olympics and World Championships, November 8th, here on ABC. And one of the defending champions of that event taking the ice right now, Todd Eldridge. He's also a five-time U.S. champion. Will we see Todd at the U.S. Nationals this year? I don't think you're going to see me this year, no. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of those. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's... I think it's just time to, to do different things and, and learn, um, you know, how to do different styles of, of programs and, and uh, incorporate those in different competitions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the United States, Todd Eldridge. So Todd is moving on to explore new avenues in skating. He does, however, want to remain eligible for the Olympics in 2002 and hopes to be able to do that. Right now he takes the ice as the leader heading into the artistic program. The music. I love the way you love me. John Michael Montgomery.
Going to, that's going to put him with these judges right up at the top. And look at the security of this spin. Remember the two skaters that are left to skate are right behind Eldridge in the standing. Bert Browning and Philippe Candelora. It's a very complete program. It's very much on one level, uh, but very effective, very strong, wonderful technique. The spins are absolutely smashing. I mean, they are really good. And he's such a steady, complete skater. He's sort of like the turtle that just kept plowing ahead. Plowing ahead. No, <laughs> I'm but not sure he would love that Well, it's a great compliment because he's been at it for a long time and his first years were very complicated. He kept working very hard and finally getting himself out. Perseverance, stick, and now security, the words used to describe him. Todd Eldridge, the five-time U.S. champion. Now, look at how he steps on this back edge right up into this triple loop. Good revolution, good height, everything steady, everything secure. You know, I mean, you, you can't ask for better than that. It would be nice if he stretched it out a little more, but look at this triple axel. Again, you know, that's a lot of revolution to do from the very tricky forward edge. He's terrific. And there's Michelle Kwan backstage. She was watching Todd Eldridge. Remember Thursday night, hope you were with us. She won the ladies competition here at the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic. <laughs> the march for shading techniques, 5.8. Well, you heard Jimmy Roberts earlier say Richard Callahan loved the way Todd Eldridge skated in the technical program. He had to love this, too. The 5.8 and the rest 5.9s for skating techniques. And for presentation, 5.7s and 5.8s. Slightly, lo slightly mm -hmm. lower. And I think that's been the history of his skating. But now he is the current leader in terms of those that have skated in the artistic program ahead of Ilya Kulik and Rudy Galindo. However, on the ice next is a longtime rival, Philippe Candeloro of France. 
In fact, it was Candeloro who last year at the Olympics kept Eldridge off of the platform. Candeloro's swashbuckling program to the Three Musketeers wowed the judges and brought the crowd out of their seats. Well, this is a small step, uh, second step. Uh, I have just to think about smile and doing like uh, you enjoy your life on the ice and what I did. And the people was clapping to me and support me. Like the all American and Canadian people was inside the stadium was stand up and clap to me. So that's, it was very good surprise for me because uh, I get the medal from the American guy, from Todd, uh, but the American public clap to me and support me. That's, it was a very big surprise for me. The Olympic bronze medalist is on the ice next as we continue with the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic from San Jose, California. After this message, in a word from our ABC station. Welcome back to the San Jose Arena. Our coverage of the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic continues now. The men's title Ladies on the and line and two skaters class, left. Philippe Todd Eldridge Candelaro. leads over Ilya Kulik and Rudy Galindo. But taking the ice is Philippe Candeloro in third place heading into the artistic program. And with this outfit, that much gold and chest hair showing, it's got to be Saturday night. You don't think that coat is coming off at any point, do you? Well, of course not. <laughs> what are you saying? He wouldn't do that. surprised that he, he could even get through these jumps. He's just come back from a long honeymoon in Bora Bora. And he's still pulling off triple jumps. He must be quite a guy. I'll leave that one alone. Oh, please do. <laughs> what hath God brought on this sport? Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you saw that in the World Series? <laughs>
There he goes. That's spinning on ankles. He broke the mold a long time ago. Well, I got to tell you, uh, I mean, we've seen some pretty broad, broad skating tonight, broad ranges of skating. I think, uh, I think first grade. Now, of course, what fascinates me is how these judges are going to place them in comparison to Kulik and Eldridge. Well, they, they may be all over the map trying to place him. You just wish he'd have a little more fun on the ice. <laughs> And the fact that we're only interested in the sporting aspect of this competition will show you in slow motion his triple Lutz, which was an excellent jump. And look at this back flip. And here it is, stretch back and pull that thing up and over. Well, tonight, the San Jose Arena. Next week, the Cheetah Lounge for <laughs> Philippe Candelaro. <laughs> There's the current leader. You couldn't have two more different skaters trying to win this title. Not Eldridge watching as Philippe Candeloro now receives his mark. 5.3 up to 5.6 for skating techniques. Well, what can I say? Uh, the techniques, I mean, he had some good jumps in there. He didn't have any triple jumps, but here I think is where they're really reflecting the fact that they, they like his work. 5.6 no, up to 5.9. You may have expected even higher marks for presentation, but Candeloro now in second place right behind Eldridge. And there is one skater left. Is this the pre-skate interview? I'm scared. Okay, now watch me skate. Hope you enjoy it. Back inside the San Jose Arena. Don't forget, Sunday, November 8th, here on ABC Sports at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific Time, it's Thrifty Car Rental Skate America International, the first major international competition of the season for those still eligible for the Olympics and World Championships. It has come down to one final skater for the men's title. Todd Eldridge, the current leader over Philippe Candeloro, and the now, reigning Olympic champion Ilya Kulik. Canada. Kurt and Rudy Browning. Galindo. But here is Kurt Browning. And what he's going to do is that's entertainment. And he is in second place heading in to this artistic program with a chance to defeat Todd Eldridge. of 32 Kurt Browning joked with us earlier this week that he was intimidated by all the young guns in this competition but not only has he won four world championships but he's won three world professional championships and he may be right now as good or better than he's ever been on the ice.
position there. The control of that. The stretch of it. I gotta tell you, I mean, he is just a really sensational performer. I mean, he's one of the, the great musical comedy interpreters of skating that I have ever seen. I am in so in awe of his ability that uh, if I didn't have this microphone, I'd be standing with the rest of the audience, too. Go ahead, Dick, you're allowed. Well, I just think he is terrific. What a group of skaters we've had tonight. Uh. I, I mean, they're terrific. You know. Kulik was wonderful, Candelora was wonderful, Galindo, Eldridge. The ultimate professional, Kurt Browning. Can he catch, though, Todd Eldridge, who is in the lead? There is some room at the top. We'll see. Back in San Jose, Kurt Browning played to the crowd, and what a performance it was with his artistic program. Now, look at the spring, the neatness, the cleanness of this axle right here. Look at the edge, the height, the stretch of it. Very, very powerful. And so much that he can reverse right into that step. And look at these steps. I mean, the way he is doing this, the forward kind of toe work. Let me tell you something. That is tough. That is really tough. You can trip so fast on that. The marks for skating Kurt technique. Browning doesn't want to take 5. a seat. 8. Can he catch Todd Eldridge? The first set of marks, those are 5. not 8. as high 5. as Eldridge's. 5. They're really the marks good marks, but he had a couple of little twitches here and there. Oh, yeah. 5. The second 5. set of Dick, much 5. higher. 5. All 5.9. 5. Well, he 5. deserved 5. every one of those. The, the choreographic 5. intent of that program and the way he does it is the best. Gene Kelly would be very proud of him. And those are enough to win. He overtakes Todd Eldridge wow, wow. to win the title. Oh, 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 man, what a moment. And he just realized it. Well, that is really an interesting reflection on the part of the judges. They did respect the choreographic input of this program, and that is what I think where we're heading in these so-called professional shows. So it's Kurt Browning, the four-time world champion who wins the title here at the U.S. Pro Figure Skating Classic, acing out Todd Eldridge, who was in the lead almost the entire way. Philippe Candeloro finishes in third, then Kulik and Rudy Galindo. And let's go down right now to Jimmy Roberts. Jimmy? All right, Terry, thanks very much. And uh, Kurt Browning coming from behind in the bottom of the ninth at this World Series time. But tell me, there's been some discussion that perhaps you're skating now better than you ever have before. 
Do you think that's in fact the case? Um, in ways, I believe. Uh, when I was amateur, I was doing more technically, but I believe that uh, I enjoy my skating more now. Uh, maturity, Stars and Ice, Sandra Bezik, those types of things have made it more possible for me to make sure that people enjoy the program. And uh, that's why I skate. That's why I think I get invited back, is because I invite the people to have fun with me. All right, it looks like everybody had a good time tonight. Certainly, yeah, Kurt Jeff Browning. Too. <laughs> Congratulations. Terry, back to you. Jimmy, thank you. I'm not sure you can call it an upset because Kurt Browning is without question one of the finest skaters in the world. But I think after the technical programs, most in this arena felt that Todd Eldridge would hang on and win the title. That didn't happen. He joins Jimmy Roberts right now. All right, Terry, thanks very much. And uh, the good news is you skated really well. The bad news is somebody else appeared to have skated a little bit better. Did you see Kurt's performance, and what did you think of it? Oh, he skated really well tonight. Uh, you know, I... He went out and uh, he gave a great performance. Uh, you know, entertained the crowd really well. How frustrating is it for you to skate as well as you did and not be able to win? Well, it's kind of an ironic thing here in San Jose that uh, <laughs> I come in second, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I skated well. I was happy with that. So, uh, you know, I go on to the next thing and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, improve and get some new programs. All right, Todd Eldridge, thanks very much. Terry, back to you. Jimmy Todd Eldridge, a second place finish at the Nationals here in 96. Tonight, he finishes second to 32-year-old Kurt Browning and the ladies' champion, 18-year-old Michelle Kwan. The new figure skating season in full swing. They'll dance the night away in San Jose. For Jimmy Roberts, Peggy Fleming, and Dick Button, I'm Terry Gannon. So long, everybody. <laughs>